Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'd like to uh, do a review, maybe a little unusual for me, but of this little guy. This right here is the uh, Gold Zero Nomad 7 solar panel system, along with the uh, Guide 10 little companion charger pack. So, um, I've been looking at this not necessarily for camping so much as just basic sorts of preparedness. Um, there are always going to be times, for instance, when the power goes out, and maybe the power's down for a day, maybe it's down for a couple of days. That just happens sometimes, ideally not, but you got to be ready for such a thing, and a solar charging system is a good way to be prepared for something like that. It doesn't cost you that much, it's not dirty or anything like that. But it may be a handy thing to have around, and so that's the sense I'm looking at this in. Sure, they're great for camping, but I'm looking at it more in that light preparedness sort of mindset. I want to thank my buddy Jim for sending this along, and let's do a quick little size comparison here. Um, here is a uh, standard U.S. quarter. Here is a uh, charger that has a couple of AA batteries in it. So you get a sense of size relative to the AA batteries. Um, this right here is a uh, standard lighter. This is the Spyderco Delica for tradition's sake in identifying size. And um, yeah, I think that'll about do it. Uh, note that I've got the camera zoomed way out relative to uh, my normal videos because this is a fairly big charger. So um, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Guide Zero, uh, Goal Zero, uh, Nomad 7, and Guide 10 little charger deal. So this kit is composed of uh, two parts. You've got, oh, if you hear the solar panels, and so each one of these is a solar panel. On the back side of the kit, uh, you end up with a... Uh, uh, basically a little zippered pouch, and inside the pouch you have a couple of things. You have a chain input, so you can plug this guy from another panel into this guy here and kind of daisy chain them. Uh, you have a 12 volt out, and then you've also got a USB port here, if you want to plug in a USB sort of power bank or something along those lines. Um, and then the other part of it is this little um, Guide 10 unit, and that plugs in right with this here and uh, serves as a little bit of a battery power bank. This whole thing combined weighs uh, not very much. You're looking at about a pound and a half, all told, but you get a source of, well, practically speaking, limitless power, although it's a little limited. We'll get there a little bit later. So um, let's talk a little bit about the good. First off, the simple fact that this is actually fairly lightweight. That's not a bad thing whatsoever. This is not out of line. It's something you could throw in a backpack if you're going camping. It's something that's not going to weigh you down. It's not a huge. It's not bulky. I mean, this is seriously a little bit more than like a paper notebook in terms of overall size. So this is something you can have around. It's not going to cost you a whole bunch of space or time or anything like that. So that's a beautiful thing. As I said, it comes with a couple of different cords and ports over here. You've got your 12 volts, you've got your USB. The USB is pretty universal. I tried, you can charge an iPhone or an iPad directly off of that. I'm sure you can do the same with an Android-based tablet. That's nice. The fact that it folds in on itself and then has this little magnetic flap here is kind of nice. It means that the entire unit becomes, especially when you stick this guy in here, sort of one cohesive little chunk. And you can throw this in a backpack and really not run into much in the way of trouble. So that's that's kind of nice. Uh, one other thing that's a little bit nice in terms of storage and transportation is the fact that you have on it all of these little loops. They're just little paracord, uh, some sort of a cord loops. And those are beautiful in that they allow you to tie this, for instance, to a backpack or something along those lines. So you can be hiking up in the mountains with this guy just hanging off the back of your pack and picking up on solar power and charging this little guy. Um, it's a nice little thing. Um, you know, we'll talk about the angles issue a little bit later, but it's good that you've got that option. Similarly, uh, there were enough of these little tie-downs here that you could very easily tie it between two trees. You could tie it down to a table if you didn't want it blowing away. These little tie-downs are a brilliant idea. It's inexpensive, but it's a good thing. It really does improve this as a project. Um, you can daisy chain a couple of these to get faster power generation. Um, you can go, you know, two of these units, you know, if everybody in your party's got one, you can daisy chain them and do some pretty quick charging past a certain point. This guy is only natively producing 7 watts, which isn't honestly a whole heck of a lot. So, uh, there you go. Um, the, uh, this little unit here is just a little charger. It's also got a little wire hook here. 
but uh, it's got a USB on one side, it's got a uh, USB input for charging, and it's got the input from the solar panel, and basically you can use this guy, there is a, it does have a little flashlight in there, but it's not really worth a damn, but you can use this guy to charge your phone after you've charged this guy using the solar panel. Basically, it acts as a little power bank. Um, you can also use it just to charge the AA batteries that are included there, um, but at the same time, chances are you're just going to be using this to charge something else. Um, not bad, though, if you use uh, AA flashlights or something along those lines. But then, of course, remember, you do have the direct USB, and so if you're anything like me, you're going to take a bigger power pack like this guy here from Manka. It's a 15,000 milliamp hour as opposed to 2100 over here. Power pack, and you're just going to charge this and then use this to charge your phone, your tablet, your whatever else. Uh, you know, you'd like to do. So that's good. And then finally, this mesh pocket in the back here is good because it does hold whatever's being charged. This unit will heat up, so you want to be careful that you're not overheating things. But at the same time, you know, it's nice to have that on there. So um, that's your good on this little solar unit here. Um, it's relatively lightweight. It does 12 volt, it does USB, and it charges this little guy natively. It does the whole daisy chaining thing, which is nice. The folding and the mesh pocket make it much easier to store everything. The uh, AA charging based on this little unit is nice because you get the option of charging off a USB or charging uh, the AA's directly and using them in a flashlight. By the way, this guy takes about three hours in full sun to charge up, but again, there's not all that much storage in there. And it does do USB, which is a beautiful thing. The great thing about this product is, well, what it does. It provides power that is completely off the grid. So if you're camping and you want to have your phone available for you, you know, just listen to music, whatever, charge your iPod, something like that, this will allow you to do that 100%. In a time where you would normally be hiking in a bunch of batteries, which are really heavy, this allows you to recharge in the field for a relatively lightweight cost, so that's what's great about it. It does generate power off the grid, and that's not something that's useful terribly often in a boring everyday suburban life, but it could be useful, could be very useful, in a less than ideal sort of situation, or if you're out in the great outdoors. So that's what's great here. Um, let's go on into the bat. Okay, so on the bad side, um, first off, this little uh, Guide 10 unit here just doesn't have a whole lot of capacity. Like I said, the capacity here is 2100 milliamp hours, and that's honestly not all that much. I mean, a lot of your modern cell phones are right in that sort of vicinity, so you might get a full charge of one phone off of this guy, and that's three hours of charge time right there. Um, and, you know, similarly, especially relative to some of your more modern power pack sorts of things, this is fairly large and fairly inefficient in terms of storage. This has seven times the amount of power storage as this little guy. So, um, you know, it's it's an amount of storage, 100%, but it's not, a, it's not stellar in that particular way. I would probably end up using an external battery pack with this guy rather than go in this approach. We'll talk about that in a bit here. On the solar unit itself, um, this little junction box is fine, but it, it does stick up a fair amount. I mean, I'm going to see if I can show that off, but it this is not, you know, it's non-trivially thick going on here. And these little cords here, um, one that can go into the guide 10, or they can daisy chain, and then the 12 volt, these are attached. Um, they're, they're firmly in there. There's no way you can remove those guys. So if you're not planning to charge on a 12 volt, uh, you're still carrying around the lead. It's not a big deal, um, but I don't have anything that would charge off of that 12 volt, and I don't know why you would. So, uh, well, there you go. But the USB thing is detachable, which means you can use any cable, whether it's uh, lightning, whether it's micro USB, pretty much anything. So that's nice. The, um, uh, another unpleasant thing about this guy is that the, the charge rate is honestly just not very high. Um, it charges this little guy, uh, like I said, three hours of direct sunlight will get you one charge of that, and that's about a full charge on a cell phone. Um, this is not fast whatsoever. It took me a long, long time. Um, it took about five days to get this guy up from a partial charge close to a full charge uh, using this panel. And to be fair, it wasn't the best charging condition. It could probably do better in another situation. But this will not charge anything particularly slowly. If you are in a long-term power outage sort of situation, even a couple of days, chances are you're going to be using more power than this guy is generating. Even if you have optimal positioning into full-size, you know, large-capacity batteries, 
this guy is not pumping all of that much wattage. Seven watts doesn't do a whole lot for you. If you have bigger needs, I mean, you're certainly not running your laptop off of it. Um, but even still, um, if you've got bigger needs, you might consider a bigger unit or a couple of them that you can kind of daisy chain to do a little bit better on that. But like I said, the power generation here is not much. And then finally, the price on these guys is a little bit high. You're looking at 70 bucks for just the panel unit here. And then if you want the AA charger too, the, the package deal of the panel and the charger are uh, about a hundred bucks and that's that's pretty expensive um especially for the low capacity of this battery pack here like i said i would lean towards doing a secondary usb pack and then charging separately externally um not the end of the world then you know it's one of those things you pay really good money for if you absolutely needed it but at the same time that's that's a fair chunk of change and especially once you throw this little guy in there um so, yeah, that's what's bad about this guy. The uh, fact that the junction box is a little bit thick and these uh, cords are just not detachable if you don't need them. The uh, charge rate on this guy is sadly slow. Three hours to charge this and a couple of days worth of sunlight to charge this guy. And, um, you know, honestly, the price is it's up there. You're looking at 70 bucks for this guy, uh, just the panel, and then another 30 for your little charger pack there. So, um, that's not ideal. Uh, let's talk about the ugly. So the ugly here is actually kind of summarized by a little diagram they got in the back here. Um, and so they're aware of it. It's just a limitation of the technology, and that's that it's very angle sensitive. If we see here, what they're basically saying is that in order for this to charge well, it needs to be angled at the sun. If the sunlight is over there, it needs to be perpendicular to it. Um, you can have it flat on the table, and it'll still charge a little bit, but it's not going to do a very good job. It's not going to be very efficient whatsoever. And if the angle is off or if the sunlight is kind of indirect, if it's a little cloudy, something along those lines, you're just not going to get very good charging off of it. It's, it's just the simple fact. And that's kind of unfortunate. It means that you can't just necessarily leave this guy on the table all day and then come back to a fully charged battery pack. No, um, it means that you're going to need to kind of adjust the angle, kind of track it a little bit. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a really good way to do that. I'm sure you could rig something up with like, uh, you know, sticks underneath these parts here. But nonetheless, it's really, it needs those angles to be precise. And it doesn't give you a great way for those angles to be precise. The other thing that this means is that this is really terrible for non-canonical sort of outdoorsy situations. If you've got a couple of days worth of power outage and all you've really got in terms of place to lay this out is a, a deck, this is not going to be great because a lot of what you're going to get is in direct light. Similarly, the dashboard of your car is not going to be a good position for this. Even the roof of your car or the roof of your home, this is really going to require those angles to be right on relative to some other solar solutions, although all of them are going to struggle a little bit. And also, of course, on a cloudy day, you're going to have very poor generation. Even that poor charge rate I was talking about earlier is kind of a best-case scenario in a lot of ways. So um, that's the ugly here, is that even though the charge rate isn't itself stellar, which is to be expected on a small panel like this, it needs to be at the right angle for it to be charging really at all. And so that means, like I said earlier, I mean, you can hang this guy off your backpack and then go hiking with it hanging there, but you're not going to be getting a whole bunch of power out of the process. I mean, you're getting something, but you're not getting all that much. And so that's that's a little bit on the ugly side. It's a technology limitation, 100%, but it is something you need to be aware of. This is super sensitive to position and needs strong, direct, perpendicular sunlight to really charge well. So uh, what's the final verdict here? You know, the final verdict here is that this is a great system for getting some power while you're camping. I mean, this definitely beats not having any power at all, and it's a very usable, very portable sort of solar system. If I was going to Uganda in the rural villages where I didn't know that I'd have access to a generator or anything like that, or even a car with a cigarette lighter, this is something I'd consider bringing along because it would get me more power than, well, zero power. 
However, um, it's not really something you can super count on. If you can supervise it, make sure the angles are good all day long, you can get a decent charge off of it. But the thing is, most people these days have higher power usage than this would allow. If you're planning on charging like a Kindle for reading, then yeah, you can probably get away with it. But, you know, charging one phone, yeah, you can probably be okay all day. Charging two phones, you're starting to get a little bit sketchy. Charging three phones and a tablet, is, and you're sure not running your laptop. So this is a limited system, but, you know, it's also a lightweight, small system. Those are limits that you kind of just have to accept. Um, in terms of my just light preparedness, being ready for unpleasant situations, um, this is probably not the best of choices. Sure, it gives you some alternatives, but it's not well suited for the, the extended urban power outage sort of situation necessarily. So there you go. I'm going to keep looking for better approaches here. I think it's a good system and I don't have any particular problem with it, but you just need to really be aware of those limitations and don't expect magic out of a system that's really going on solar charging. The one other thing I would say is um, this little guy here, the uh, extra power pack, doesn't impress me so much. I would probably go with a different USB power pack unless I really needed those AA batteries for some reason. You get much better power density and frankly you'll pay a much better price because um, 30 bucks for this is it's a little much. So anyways, there you go. I hope this is interesting um, that you really got a charge out of this review uh, uh, and that you have yourselves a wonderful and directly sunny rest of your day. Bye now.